alternating ran here. What I want to show you is the difference in the draw of a rotor from an old Chrysler vehicle compared to draw of a rotor. This is a 140 amp rotor. This alternator was about 60 amps, I believe. And uh, we're going to show you the difference. Now, what the reason I'm doing this is because a lot of people are just going to the auto parts store uh, with, our, with the Chrysler upgrade, the voltage regulator bypass kit, and they're just buying a, the old regulator from the 87, pre-87 Chrysler vehicles. The problem is, is those old regulators really aren't heavy duty enough. What I've got here is I've got the... Uh, C8312 from our website, which is the C8312 is really like the early 80 prior to 87 Chrysler regulator. Then we have our C8313, which is a heavy duty adjustable regulator. You'll see it's got the adjusting screw on the back. This is a much beefier regulator. This regulator only has a 5 amp field draw capability, where this regulator has a 10 amp field draw capability which just makes it that much tougher and, and I'll show you the reason why I've got a, a variable power supply here and I've got the power supply hooked up this old rotor and basically rotors are electromagnetic fields in other words there's a coil of wire wound inside this rotor and each end of that coil of wire comes out here to the slip ring where your brushes would ride on but I've got the leads connected right to where the two wires come out what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on, and I've got it turned down low. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the power supply up to, uh, right up to 14 volts. There we go. And you see at 14 volts, let me bring this in a little bit here. Let me see that. On this needle, I'm up to 14 volts. And this one, you can see that it's doing, each one of those little marks is 2 amps. There, focus in there. So we've got a 4 amp draw at 14 volts with this old Chrysler, Chrysler type rotor. So now what I'm going to do, shut this off. Now I'll bring this over. And now this is a 140 amp rotor. This is a uh, much, much later model. You know, this is out of the late 60s, early 70s over here. And this is out of uh, a much later 140 amp rotor. I'm going to turn this on. Now we're at the same 14 volts. And what you'll see here is the later rotor has a much much higher draw and that means this rotor right now two four six two four six eight we're up to eight amps draw there's almost eight amps draw on that we're almost uh, peaking that out so that means that field draw the field draw of that rotor here we go the the field draw on this rotor, maximum out at 14 amp or 14 volts, the draw of this rotor is 8 amps. So if you're using it on the C8312, and you can see the rotors when you run power through them become electromagnetic coils, and look at it's drawing that regulator right in the metal case of that regulator. Those are very strong electromagnets once you will power through them. Uh, so with the C8312 at 8 amps the c8312 the basic auto parts store regulator from the early chrysler rotors uh that that has this has field draw capability of about five amps so if you're running eight amps through it with the early or the late style heavy duty rotor you're exceeding that that rating with the c8313 heavy duty adjustable one you're not exceeding because the C8313 has a 10 amp field draw capability where the early one only has 5 amps. So that's what happens. A lot of people will just go to the auto parts store and just buy a regulator from a early Chrysler vehicle and stick it on their later Chrysler vehicle when the regulator and their computer goes bad. 
um, and they'll put it on a 120, uh, uh, 160 amp alternator somewhere in there, and that regulator will burn up pretty quick. They'll last for a while, but they just won't last a super long time. So that's that's the point of it. There's a there's a second point. In other words, when you put this early regulator on a vehicle, it will fail. I'm going to set that up and show you how that works as well.